everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about a new type of function we call a polynomial. So if you've been following along in the videos, you'll know that um, the last type of function we studied was called a quadratic function, which is a very specific type of polynomial. So in fact, the two major types of functions we've had so far are linear functions and quadratic functions, and they both fall into this family of functions that we call polynomials. So if we recall, um, if I'm looking at a quadratic function, it has this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So this would be my general form of a quadratic function. Now, the difference between um, a quadratic function and, the other, and any other polynomial is um, this term right here. So notice how the biggest term that I have is a square term. So if I look around, I have these x's and I have exponents on them. This exponent would be a 1, but we don't write it. Um, <clears throat> the biggest one I have is a 2. And so that's how I can, and that's how I know I have a quadratic function. Um, well, if I have a general polynomial, I can actually add more terms on here. So I could have an x cubed term, um, and I could have an x to the fourth term, um, and I could keep going. And so um, if I notice here, I have numbers in front of my x squared and my x. Um, and so if I wanted to keep going, I could put different letters in front of x to the fourth and x cubed, but um, eventually we're gonna run out of letters. So, so we don't do that. What we do is we have a different way to write our coefficients. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use the letter a, and I'm gonna put it um, in front of one of my coefficients. Let's start with x squared, put an a here. And to denote that it's the coefficient that goes along with the square term, I'm gonna put a little subscript two next to the a, just so I know that this a two is the coefficient that goes along with this exponent squared. So if I continue on here, um, what I have is now, well, I'm gonna have some coefficient that goes along with the x to the one term. And then I'm also gonna have a constant term, which I call a zero, right? Or a naught, sometimes we say. Well, if we keep going up, there's some number that could be with my cube term, that would be an a three, and then um, an a four to go with my x to the fourth. Now, some of these might be zero, some of them might be not. And eventually what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have some biggest power on x, okay? And so what I'm gonna do, I don't know what that is yet, so I'm gonna call it an n, um, and then the coefficient that goes along with this is a sub n. All right, so any polynomial has this form that I've just written in right here. The thing that you wanna look for is, as I go around, notice that all of the terms, I'm just adding up a bunch of terms, and every term looks like this. It has an x in it, and that x may be raised to a power. Okay, so this is raised to a whole number power, 3, 2, 4, and then n would be some other whole number. That's right, so if I see that, um, I have a polynomial function. Now, as we saw, if I just take these bottom three terms, if, if the squaring term is my biggest term, that's the form of a quadratic function, and if the um, x to the first power, if that's my biggest term, then this would be the form of a linear function. Okay. All right, so this is the general form um, of a polynomial. Now, a couple things that we want to look for that um, are often interesting to us um, are these terms right here. So the biggest term is often very interesting to us, and the smallest term is often very interesting to us. Okay, so this smallest term right here, this is what we call the constant term. Right, so we call it the constant term because there's no x associated with it. Right, so there's no, there's no x associated with it, so we call it the constant term. It never is going to change. Um, and then my biggest term right here, this is what we call the leading term. Okay, so the leading term is the term that always goes along with the biggest power on x. So what happens is, Sometimes they might not always be written in order, and we'll see an example of that. So what you have to do is you look around, you find the biggest power, and that will be um, your leading term. All right, so um, a couple more things. When I look into my leading term, there are two things that I see. Um, I see 
and n, okay, so n, this is equal to the degree, okay, so the new vocab word is called the degree, the largest power uh, on x, and then um, this a n, this is our leading coefficient. Okay. Leading coefficient. Okay, so the leading term is made up of um, the leading coefficient and then x to the n, where n is called the degree of our polynomial. Okay, so um, biggest term, smallest term are important, and we give them our name. Okay, so let's get an example. Um, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to bring up an example, and so we can pick out the degree, the leading coefficient, and constant terms, and, and see a concrete example of this. All right. So I scroll down, we have a, an example here, and we still have all of our information from before. Um, and so as I look around, um, as I look around my term here, I notice that um, every term, so this term right here is just some number times x to a whole number power, so that's good. This term right here is some number x to a whole number power, which is great, and then some number and if you want to think about x to a whole number power, you could think about it as x to the zero if you'd like. Um, but we just write it as a, a uh, constant term here. All right, so this is a polynomial. It, it satisfies my conditions as before. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can identify um, our leading term, our constant term, and then the parts of our leading term. All right, so the constant term, what you want to do is just find the term that doesn't have any x's in it. And so that's this term right here. So this is my constant term. And then to find my leading term, what I want to do is I go around and I look at all the different powers on x and I find the one that's the biggest. So notice in this case that my terms aren't written in order. Um, x cubed appears here, but x to the fourth is bigger. So I pick the biggest term. Like I have this x to the fourth here. So my leading term, um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in red is this one right here. So this would be my leading term here in red. And then if I want to identify my leading coefficient, okay, well, my leading coefficient is this negative five. That's out front. Okay, so negative five right here. This is my leading coefficient. And then my degree is going to be that power on x is going to be this right here. It's going to be this four. So what I would say is this example right here, this is a degree four polynomial. So it's a fourth degree polynomial. It has a leading term of negative five x to the fourth. Okay, so the leading coefficient is negative five, um, and then it has a constant term of seven. So I'm adding seven on the end. Right, so what we're gonna do is we'll see all sorts of examples of different polynomials and how we can get information from them. Um, but for this video, we get had a nice introduction. Um, so if you look to our next video, um, what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can represent polynomials in different forms. So the form I showed you here is called the general form, but just like quadratic functions, we also have a factored form, and we'll try to go between the two. All right, so see you then.